Hey everyone, namaste and welcome to a very very special episode here on Anand TV. It's the 25th episode of Yoga Shakti. And first of all, I would like to thank all of you who have been on this journey with me so far and I truly look forward to connecting with you deeper. Now towards this I would just like to say that you know both Anand TV as well as I have our YouTube channels and uh, I also have an Instagram account where you can you know connect with me by uh, messaging me directly you know ask your questions so both my YouTube channel as well as my Instagram account come under Shailaja Menon Yoga yeah and uh, let me just start with uh, the practice so last week I was talking about mental health and yoga so this is really something i'm extremely passionate about because in a lot of places yoga is just equated as an exercise right so we're just really trying to spread the awareness that the yoga practice can really help us to shift states of mind into a more harmonious peaceful and settled state especially in these covid times it has become more important than ever before that we learn to manage our minds and the best way the greatest tools to do that is really our own body and our breath right so through the yoga practice we learn to use our breathing and we learn to use our body to consciously shift our state of mind to a better more harmonious and settled state now how does that happen again the core theme is that mind body and breath are all deeply connected so by using our breath and our body we learn to do that pranayama practice asana practice all of that goes towards settling the mind from its agitated frustrated angry distraught state to a more peaceful and settled state so let's go into the practice and uh, remembering that even in the bhagavad gita lord krishna says samatvam yoga uchyate right so towards this samatvam let us go into the practice namaste So let's get started with the practice since we've already done 24 episodes so far what I'm going to do today is really uh, go over you know stuff that we've done in many of them and come out with uh, some a set of poses that uh, you can practice on an everyday basis yeah so I'm going to include some for strength some that will help with uh, spinal flexibility right and some that will help with uh, some other aspects so let's get into it to begin with just come on to your hands and knees Okay, so this is always something we can uh, start with. As you inhale, arch your spine, really sink your spine down, and look up. As you exhale, press down through your palms, round your back, looking down. Inhale, arch your spine, and looking up. Exhale, round your spine, looking down. Inhale, arch your spine. looking up exhale round your spine looking down right so this practice is a beautiful practice when done rhythmically with the breath really releasing all the tension the tightness the stiffness in the spine exhale round and hold okay then slowly bring your spine back to a neutral position and from here we are moving into adhomukha svanasan the downward facing dog position so just press your toes down and lift the knees off yeah so initially keep your knees bent palms pressing forward shoulders moving back really working on a deep flexion of your shoulders which opens your chest so just staying here for a bit just enjoying the practice just feeling that deep opening in your chest the opening in your shoulders the lengthening of your spine then from here release the heels towards the floor so that brings about a beautiful hamstring release as well so just staying here just feeling your body exploring your body allowing your mind to really sink into the body be absorbed in the body ok 
Okay, and then slowly rising up. Drop your knees down. Move your hips back. And moving into child pose. Okay, from here moving into side plank. So you can just take your right leg behind. And then shift weight to the left hand. Draw back through your right shoulder. So that your shoulders kind of stack up one on top of the other. Lift the arm up. And just look up towards your thumb. Yeah, so trying to stay stable here. The palms pressing into the mat. Hip rising up. Gaze steady at your thumb. And hold. Okay, slowly lower down. And coming down. So just going into some uh, variations here. The most uh, common uh, mistake I see here is, I mean, I'm not saying it's a mistake, but maybe it's uh, because we're not aware. The hip tends to go down. Yeah, so see if you can keep your hip rising up. Yeah, and then also if uh, this is too hard and you can just begin by just placing the left knee on the floor and then rising up. So you at least get a feel of how the position is. Yeah, so this is an easier variation for you to do. But eventually working towards getting your knees off. Yeah, and then working on the other side. So just tilting towards your right side. You can take your left leg behind. That keeps you more stable. Lift the arms up. Keep the hip rising up. And look up. And slowly lower down, drop the knees down and release into child pose. Okay, so we're going to do some abdominal work here. We've done this before. It's called the half boat pose, Ardha Navasan. So just sliding down and then just really engaging your abdominal muscles to lift your head, neck and chest off the floor. Right, so if you're really comfortable here, you feel good here. Then straighten the legs forward. Keep your toes stretching forward and stay. Okay, we're just holding for a count of 10. And slowly release down. Just relax your abdominal muscles, feel the shoulders relax, feel your arms relax. And then turn to your side, coming up, we're working into the full Navasan position. So we'll do uh, break this up into two variations. So for one, you can just keep the knees bent. Yeah, so just keep your knees bent, arms straight, and then you'll notice the spine tends to round. So see whether you can lengthen through the spine and just hold here again for 10 counts. Okay, and then release the feet to the floor, hug the knees to the chest. Lengthen through the spine to ease your spine. And then going into another round. So again, leaning back a little bit so that you can lift your legs off the floor. Try to keep your thighs as close, yeah, as close as possible. And then from here, try to straighten your legs, right? So this is the second position where you can just lift the heels off, right? Lengthen through the spine. Just hold well. Okay, so again, release the feet to the floor, hug the knees to the chest, lengthen through the spine. And last round. So this uh, round requires you to straighten your leg fully. Yeah? So you can just try a few times right, where you can get your right leg straight, right? And then lean back again, try to get your left leg straight, right? Coming forward and then lean back, try to get your right leg straight. 
and then coming forward as you lean back, try to get your left leg straight. So just working in this manner, leaning back a little bit, try to get your right leg straight. And then leaning back a bit, try to get your left leg straight. Right? And then finally, just seeing if you can get both legs straight. Okay, and then slowly release the feet down. Hug the knees to the chest. Lengthen through your spine. And relax. Okay, so this again is a very nice position. One of my favorite positions to build strength in your upper body hips, all of those areas. So this is actually like a variation of Purvottanasana, but uh, we are keeping the knees bent here. So very popularly, it's called the table pose. Yeah. So press down through your feet. And as you inhale, just lift your hips up. Yeah. Exhale and lower down. So you can just do this a few times. As you inhale, press down through your feet. Lift the hips up. So as you lift the hips up, try to get your knees and heels in line. Right, keep the hips in line with the knees. Try to really feel the shoulders rotate out, chest open. And slowly lower down. And last round, pressing down, lifting the hips up. And just stay. Okay, lower the hips. Right. Again, you can just hug the knees to your chest, lengthen through your spine, and release your spine. Okay, so we're going into that uh, little sequence that we do, which helps us with the sun salutations. So from here, coming on your knees, working towards getting your chest to the floor. So this requires a good amount of arm strength. So remember to bring the chest in between your hands. Yeah? So from here, just, just coming down. And then lower your hips. Inhale, rising up. Exhale, into down dog. Yeah? So you're just doing three rounds here. Drop your knees down. Chest and chin down. Lower your hips. Inhale, rising up. Shoulders back, chest open. Exhale and down dog. Drop your knees down. Chest and chin down. Lower your hips. Inhale and rising up. Exhale and down dog. Yeah, and then from here you can just drop your knees out. Move your hips back. Relax your spine. Okay, and then slowly rising up and then moving into a beautiful backbend, Ustrasan. So just opening your chest here a few times and coming back up. Inhale and open. Exhale and back. Inhale and open. Exhale and back. Yeah, and then you can just lean back, release the right hand towards the heel, left arm arching back, and stay. Yeah, so the important thing here is that the pelvis moves forward and the chest rises up towards the ceiling. Okay, slowly rising up, right? So you uh, you can see here that you know require good external rotation of your shoulders, right? And then spinal mobility, all of which we've been working on. So now you try to see whether you can go back with both your hands. So just really arching back, and then release your hands and stay.
and rising back up and moving back into child pose and release your spine. So another variation of this uh, Ustrasan that you can do is with uh, one leg forward. It's uh, pretty much the same action. So as you draw back, you just try to release your hand towards the knee. But the important thing like in Ustrasan, the pelvis moves forward, the chest lifts up and then you can take your arm back and stay. And slowly rising up and then just change legs. Yeah, so you bring your left, uh, right leg forward here and then release your left hand behind, arching back. And slowly rising up and take your leg back and moving into the bridge position, Setu Bandha Sarvangasan, for which you have to lie on your back. Keep the knees bent. So try to ensure that your knees and your heels are in line. Yeah, so just press down through your feet, lifting the hips up. Exhale and lower down. So you can do this a few times. Each time you come up, you try to get a little bit more of your spine off the floor. So as you inhale, pressing down through your feet, rising up. And then if you want to get some more height, you can just roll your shoulders down. Yeah, shoulders coming towards each other. Feet pressing into the mat, hips rising up. And just stay. Okay, exhale and lower down. And last round. So just pressing down through your feet, lifting the hips up. And then if you want to go deeper, you can like continue to externally rotate the shoulders. And then you can clasp your fingers. And then you can lift your heels off. All of that gives you some more depth Then try to maintain your hips up as you release the heels to the floor. And slowly release the hips down. And hug the knees to your chest. Gently roll from side to side. Relax your spine. Okay, so another variation of the bridge pose that we just did, you can do here, is on your forearms. So just lie down like how I'm lying down with the forearms on the floor. Press down through your feet. Yeah? Press down through your feet to lift your hips up. Yeah? So you might find this a bit more challenging. So we're just going to move here, lower your hips down. Inhale and rising up. Exhale and coming down. And last round, lift and stay. Okay, slowly lower down. Just release your spine to the floor. Hug the knees to your chest. Right, just relax your spine. Okay, now we're going to work into upward bow position, Urdhva Dhanurasan. So just take your hands behind. So the positioning of the arms is, is important. Make sure your fingers are pointing straight in. Yeah. Right, and then from here, just pressing down through the feet, trying to lift your hips up like you do in bridge. And then you need a little bit of upper body strength to push up. And lift the arm straight up.
okay so you can move your little bit for strength you can bring your head down you can walk your hands in and rising up again deepening the back bend and last round you can drop your head down walk your hands in and rising up And slowly release down and hug the knees to your chest and relax. So after these deep back bends, it's nice to do some forward bends. So my most favorite one is Janu Shirsasan. Bend the right knee, sole of your right foot into your left inner thigh. And then you will know that whichever leg is coming forward, that hip automatically comes forward. So you have to draw back a little bit through that left hip. And then as you inhale, just lengthen through your spine, exhale and fold deep. So just releasing completely over the leg. Okay, it's a beautiful deep forward bend. Using your breath to go deeper as you inhale, arch your spine. As you exhale, release deeper. Inhale, arch your spine. As you exhale, release deeper. And slowly inhale and rising up. Exhale and release. And changing legs, bring the sole of your left foot into your right inner thigh. Draw back through that right hip. A little bit of twist in all of these forward bends with one leg forward. Exhale and fold deep. Yeah, so working with your breath, inhale, arch your spine. Exhale and fold. Inhale, arch your spine. Exhale and fold. And slowly inhale and rising up. Exhale and release. And working into Paschimottanasana with both the legs forward. Inhale and rising up. Exhale and folding over. Right? So even here, just working with your breath. Inhale, arch your spine. Exhale and fold. Feeling that deep release along the entire back of your body, the calves, the back of the knees, the hamstrings, the glutes, the spine, releasing your head, neck and shoulders, really surrendering into the position. You want to go a little bit deeper again inhale arch your spine lengthening exhale and fold okay inhale and rising up exhale and release and lastly winding up with some twists so one of my, again, most favorite twists is Ardha Matsyendrasana. Bring your right knee over the left, right? Just hug that right knee close to your chest. Take the right arm back. Okay, so if I sit like this, maybe you can see better. Yeah, take that right arm back, right shoulder back, twisting back. Yeah, and then if you want a deeper position, this has many deeper positions. You can take your hand across. You can keep it this way, but continuously rotating back through the right side. And then finally releasing the hand. You can even take hold of that left foot. And this gives you a really deep twist. Okay, and then slowly release. Just doing the same with the other side. So when you sit, just try to bring the 
the foot has to come over the knee yeah and then whichever knee is up you try to grab it with the other hand right and then your left hand will go back twisting back okay so it'll be a bit like that yeah so really opening out through that left shoulder left side of your chest right and then you want to take it deeper take your hand across okay and then finally you can release it to grab hold of the opposite leg okay and then release completely so we've come to the end of this uh, 25th episode and i truly hope uh, it's been a recap and you remember doing all of these uh, many positions in all of these different episodes and uh, as i'm recording this uh, episode actually tomorrow is vishu so i would like to wish uh, all of you celebrating a very happy vishu and a very happy new year and hopefully we will all be in a better place in the coming year so with this uh, i would like to end loka samasta sukhino bhavantu may the entire universe be filled with peace and joy love and light namaste